Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looking for a simple way to use the Shodan API from the command line? Well, look no further than Nmap. Rob today is writing how you can use Nmap to actually rely on Shodan to do its port scanning. So instead of actually actively going out and port scanning a particular target, this feature will rely on a port scan that Shodan may already have done on this target. Of course, this is not quite as complete and of course not as current as if you would run a scan right now. But uh, number one, it's more stealthy. And then what you're seeing from Shodan can actually be quite insightful as well because it is not up to date. So you may see, for example, ports that were open in the past have been closed now. Ports that are only part of the time open that you may miss in a quick scan. That's something that you may discover with this Nmap script. Real neat idea here. And uh, Rob gives you a couple of ideas how to tie this in with uh, various other systems, like for example, how to manipulate the output to be more useful, how to pass more arguments like uh, hosts and such that you would like to scan and how to make it even more stealthy by, for example, turning off uh, DNS lookups. And if you're using the popular Mac terminal emulator iTerm2, you may have noticed that the new version was released a couple days ago. And this version does fix a number of critical vulnerabilities. The core issue here is how URLs are handled as part of the console. Now, many terminal emulators are allowing you to highlight URLs, making URLs uh, clickable, and this happens via escape codes. Now, the problem with URLs is always that there are a number of different URL schemes. It's not just HTTP and HTTPS, but can be things like Whois or Telnet or SSH. Some of them may actually pass part of the URL to the command line. And that's sort of where the problem comes in here. For example, the x-man-page scheme can be used to execute arbitrary code. SSH is problematic as well. There are two vulnerabilities related to SSH that are being addressed with this particular update. Interesting vulnerabilities here and definitely something that uh, if you are developing a console software and such, you should take a look at uh, because these escape sequences and these URL handlers have been problematic in the past in other software as well. And if you're using GitHub Enterprise Server, which is GitHub's on-premise solution, be aware that there is a critical vulnerability in the SAML integration. Essentially, this leads to an authentication bypass, which then can be escalated to code execution. Definitely update to the latest version. And if you talk about GitHub, only fair that we also talk about one of the alternatives, and that's Bitbucket. Uh, Mandiant uh, put out a report that uh, they are seeing secrets being stolen from Bitbucket. Now, one thing that Bitbucket allows you to do is have pipelines and pipelines integrate with your continuous delivery, continuous integration uh, services that basically allow you to automatically build uh, systems. The problem with this is, and that's a common problem, not unique to Bitbucket, that you often have to pass secrets like API keys and the like to these uh, build tools. And well, how are you doing so securely? One way how people often do that is via environment variables. Environment variables isn't the worst way necessarily to do it, but well, you have to give access to these environment variables. And one way that's often done is by basically just printing them into a text file and then passing that text file to Bitbucket as an artifact, which of course means that these credentials are exposed in the clear in Bitbucket. Bitbucket itself does not really have a great solution for this. This is add-on software that you need in order to deal with your secrets. But that's pretty much true for 
any kind of CI CD tool that you need to come up with some kind of secret management solution in order to solve the problem of having to pass these secrets to various tools without exposing them to someone who may compromise your pipeline. On talking about leaking secrets, Microsoft came out with its new line of Copilot Plus PCs. What is really different about these PCs is that they're heavily targeting AI and machine learning with additional coprocessors. Not just Microsoft makes these PCs, but there is one specific feature that Microsoft supports and that's called Recall. Recall essentially records what you're doing on the PC and then allows you to search your history. Think about it like bash history, but including all the GUI interactions all the web pages that you may have seen and uh, things like that. Uh, one important uh, note here from the Copilot Plus PC FAQ is that this recall feature does not actually hide information like passwords and financial account numbers. So if you're using this feature, uh, be aware all of it is recorded, even if it should be recorded only on your system. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. I hope you like this podcast and I hope you recommend it. Hope you like it also in your favorite podcast platform and leave a good review or uh, just uh, leave a click on the five star mark. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.